friends, we are ready for NFL picks for week number three in the league where they play. For pay! Great to be back with you guys. I have the best audience in all of media, the most loyal audience, the most passionate audience. You guys are the best. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks for the support. I love you all. We're rolling through the first two weeks here. I had the identical record the first two weeks. 14 and 4 week one, 14 and 4 week two, 28 and 8 overall. I'm rolling so far. Doing really good with the over and unders too. 4 and 0 with the over and unders. Now I don't pick my over and unders till Sunday. Because it's hard to pick over and unders a week before the game. Because I like to check weather like rain and wind. But when I say a game is going to be a, you know, a high scoring shootout, you, you know where I'm headed. I'm heading over. And if I say the game's going to be a slobber knocker game, I'm thinking under. But definitely look at those over and unders because there's some good plays there week to week. But 28 and 8 the first two weeks. Can't complain about that. Let's keep it rolling. Week number three. Pick number one. Let's go out to the desert in Arizona. And how many times have I started the show with the Arizona Cardinals? I don't think any. It's the first. With the Arizona Cardinals, a minus six and a half against the Detroit Lions. Arizona 2-0 beat Washington. I've been saying this for a while. Arizona is better than most people think. They were better last year, too. They didn't have a good record, but they were very competitive. Quarterback looks good. Coach has surprised me. Picking up Hopkins was a steal. An absolute steal. I mean, he's a great player. An absolute steal getting him from the Texans. I like the direction Arizona is going. That's a tough division. I think Arizona may be able to make the playoffs this year. I don't think they're going to win the Super Bowl, but they are much improved. They are a team on the rise. They're 2-0. Like I said, six and a half over Detroit. Then you got the Detroit Lions. And I'm going to try and keep my cool here because I lost it last week. But it's going to be tough because there's some teams that really irritate me. And the Detroit Lions are right up there. Detroit 0-2. Lost to Green Bay. They were up 14-3 at the end of the first quarter. Then they got outscored 39-7 the rest of the way. This is after blowing the lead to Chicago last week. Their defense is like Swiss cheese. They've given up over 1,000 yards the first two games. Defense looks awful. Stafford, another pick six. He's got to go. The Lions haven't won a playoff game since 1991. That's almost 30 years. Stafford's been to the playoffs three times. He hasn't won a playoff game at all. Think about that. Stafford, who is supposed to turn this franchise around, has not won a playoff game. So I don't want to hear about all his passing records and he holds this record and that record for the Lions. It means nothing. It means nothing. The Lions haven't won a championship since 1957 and this city is a proud city. The Red Wings won so many times. The Pistons won a lot. The Tigers have gotten things done. And then the Lions, year in and year out, are inept. And let me get to Patricia, the coach. 6-10 his first year. 3-12-1 last year and 0-2 this year. I don't like him as a coach. And just because you're a Bill Belichick disciple doesn't mean you're going to be the next Bill Belichick. You don't have Tom Brady. You're not Bill Belichick. And I think that's one of the problems with Patricia. He wants to be Belichick so much, he doesn't know who he is. Patricia, stop trying to be Belichick. You have a hard enough time being yourself. Be your own man. Who are you? Who are you as a coach? You keep trying too hard to be Belichick. You're a wannabe that's never going to be. And he's got that stupid pencil in his ear every week. You know, because he wants us to think he's some scholar. You know, some genius. 
You know, look at me, I got a pencil in my ear. I must be smart. He's shown me nothing. Remember Mangini? I talked about him last week. Mangini was supposed to be the next Belichick. How did that work out? And just because you're a Belichick disciple and you have that stoic look on the sidelines doesn't make you Belichick. Patricia is a wannabe that never will be. Patricia, again, stop trying to be Bill Belichick. You have a hard enough time being yourself. To me, the best thing that could happen to the Lions franchise and their fans go 0-16, draft Lawrence, get rid of Stafford, and Patricia can go as well. He shows me nothing. He looks like the blob on the sidelines. Remember the old Steve McQueen movie in black and white, the original blob? Well, that blob's got nothing on this blob, Patricia, because that's what he looks like on the sidelines, a big blob. How about the defense? This is the defense you put together? You want to be New England? <laughs> That's hilarious. New England? Please. New England? Please, spare me. You give up over a thousand yards of offense the first two weeks, your defense is Swiss cheese. Swiss cheese, it's terrible. Then you got Stafford on the other end throwing pick sixes. Again. Patricia shows me nothing, nothing. He's a wannabe that never will be. He can go, Stafford can go, and the best thing the Lions can do is lose every game from here on out. And there's a lot of teams, by the way, that could use Lawrence next year, even teams that have drafted quarterbacks recently, and we'll get to them. There's a whole list of teams that want that number one pick this year. Detroit shows me nothing. Gutless, gutless, gutless. You blow a 17-point lead to the Bears in Week 1. You have a 14-3 lead against the Packers, and you get bombed the rest of the way. 39-7, to you got outscored. Again, the last two second halves have been embarrassing for Detroit. It's a four-quarter game, Detroit, not two. Four. They play four on this level. Arizona at home, minus six and a half against Detroit. Two-team teaser, move it to pick them. You've got to take Arizona. Arizona is on the way up, and Detroit is on the way down big time. Big time. Patricia looks like he's going to crash through the floor at any second. You've got to go with Arizona here. They've showed me a lot. Detroit's shown me nothing, nothing. Especially in the second half. I think Arizona's just better, and they're a team on the rise, and Detroit is, they're almost done already, Detroit, this year. You got Green Bay and Chicago at 2-0. There's going to be a lot of good teams in the NFC, including the whole NFC West. You think Detroit has any chance of getting to the playoffs? As Jim Moore would say, playoffs? Playoffs? You just hope they can win a game. And actually, you don't want them to win a game. Lose them all. Get Lawrence, get rid of Stafford, and get rid of Patricia. The new and improved blob. And take that pencil out of your ear. You're not fooling anybody. That's pick number one. Pick number two. Let's go to Indianapolis, where the Indianapolis Colts are minus nine and a half against the New York football Jets. Colts all one and one, beat up on Minnesota. Good job by the Colts. I hammered them in Rivers last week. They really responded. They beat up on the Vikings last week. I mean, beat them up. That was a good response by the Colts. And I hammered them last week. So the Colts are up to one and one. And then you got the New York football Jets. Oh, boy. 0 oh and 2 got annihilated by San Francisco in the Meadowlands, and oh, by the way, the Niners were decimated with injuries. Lost their quarterback, lost their all-pro tight end, nobody in the secondary. I mean, the Niners had like two healthy bodies in the secondary, and the Jets still couldn't move the ball from here to there. You have to wonder now about Donald. He was supposed to be the answer. 
He's shown me nothing this year. It's only two games. He's looked awful. He doesn't have a lot to work with. The Jets look bad. I thought the Jets were supposed to be this big up-and-coming team a few years ago. They got all these draft picks and the new quarterback. Through two weeks, has anyone looked worse than the Jets? They, to me, look like the worst team in football right now. I, now, I know they played the Bills and the Niners. Those are two good teams. The Jets showed me nothing, nothing in either game. They were out of these games from the start. Donald couldn't even get the team into the end zone until, as Marv Albert would say, garbage time at the end of the game. And this is against a Niner team that had nobody left in the secondary. Bosa went out. Injuries everywhere. Donald threw for what, less than 200 yards, and a lot of that came on the last drive. The Jets were eaten alive. They are another team, can't get out of their way. Another franchise like the Lions, can't get out of their way. And I thought Adam Gase was this genius. Another guy they labeled a genius. Where is it? I don't see it. The Jets right now look like one of the worst teams in football, if not the worst. And I'll tell you what. And I'm talking about, going to be talking about Lawrence a lot, the quarterback from Clemson. Say the Jets have the worst record in football this year. Do they take Lawrence and give up on Donald? Do you believe in Donald? He does some good things, but do you believe in him? Do you really think he's the guy that's going to get you to the promised land? You can't be sure of that, can you? He's going backwards now. The team is just a train wreck. Adam Gase is a genius? And I'm laughing. The Jets, all in the offseason, said they wanted some respect. They were not getting any respect. Are you kidding me, New York football Jets? You're not getting any respect. Well, how about you win some games? How about you at least compete? I remember that year. Remember the long time ago when Brady hurt himself and he was out for the year for New England? So many Jet fans said this was the passing of the baton, New England to the Jets. Woo! Really? The passing of the baton? If the Jets had a baton passed to them, they'd drop it, fumble it, kick it, then lose it, and finally find it and give it back to the Patriots. A baton was passed? When did this happen? The Jets have been awful. Awful. It feels like the Jets have got nothing done since Joe Willie Namath. They've had a couple decent seasons here now, like Parcells had a couple decent seasons, but even then they were cursed. Testaverde gets hurt, they lose that heartbreak in Denver, a game they should have never lost. So even Parcells couldn't get him to the Super Bowl. But let's be honest, since Joe Willie Namath, <clears throat> the Jets have had a lot of lean years. They're another franchise that cannot get out of their own way, much like the Lions. That would be a good matchup, Jets-Lions. What an embarrassment the Jets have been the last two weeks. Respect? You know what they say about respect? How about you earn it, New York football Jets? So to me, you three-team teaser guys, you get nine points in a three-team teaser. You got to pick three teams, move the line nine points with three games. You, you got to use Indianapolis in one of your three-team teasers. The Colts responded last week, beat up on Minnesota, their home, and the Jets have shown you nothing. Nothing. How could you like them with any amount of points? They've been out of these games in the first quarter. Out of them. They were out of the Buffalo game right away. It was 21 nothing, And the first play of the game, they were out of this game. Niners went right down the field and scored the first play of the game, and that was the end of the Jets. Good night. Got to like the Colts in the three-team teaser there. That's pick number two. Pick number three. Oh, boy, the teams just keep coming. The teams that annoy me just keep coming. Let's go down to Philadelphia, where the Philadelphia Eagles are minus six and a half against the Cincinnati Bengals. Bengals 0-2, lost to Cleveland. The Bengals have at least been competitive the first two weeks. Could have beat the Chargers, were in the game against the Browns, and Burrow does some good things. He looks like he could be a very good quarterback. You don't expect a lot from the Bengals this year. You're probably getting more than you thought from Burrow at this point. They threw him right out there. 
He looks pretty good right now. So the Bengals have been competitive. And then you got the Eagles. 0-2, lost to the Rams, and what's with Wentz? A another guy, up, down, the he doesn't look like he improves. He never looks like he gets better. He either gets worse or he stays at a certain level. Another two picks in this game. Remember when the Eagles won the Super Bowl a few years ago, that was with Foles, not Wentz. And everyone thought Wentz was going to be a, a star in this league. And I'm not saying he doesn't have moments. But it's time he starts picking up his game. You're starting to wonder about him. Is he ever going to get better? And that division stinks. I mean, the Giants are going to be awful. Washington, you don't expect much from. Philly, who knows? They could be 8-8 eight eight at best. And the Cowboys, you know how up and down they are. You saw that last week. And you saw that last year. They could be 9-7. and seven. So no one's going to run away with this division. So the Eagles, just like last year, the Eagles somehow stole it. This game is about pride for Philadelphia. It's a prideful city. Those fans in Philly, if you lose this game, are going to go ballistic. They tell it like it is in Philadelphia. They don't sugarcoat it, and there's no nonsense with Philadelphia. They're pretty much in your face. This is about pride. The Eagles cannot go to 0-3, and they cannot lose at home to the Bengals. This is a pride game. They have to have it. Have to have it. You cannot lose to the Bengals with a rookie quarterback in your building. If Philadelphia is going to respond, it's got to start here this week. I move the line to pick them in a two-team teaser and take the Eagles. You have to think they're going to beat the Bengals at home, right? I mean, they can't lose to Cincinnati at home, can they? I have to think the Eagles are going to show some pride here. This is about pride this week, Philly. I think they get it done. I'm sure they'll make it interesting. I'm sure Wentz will make it interesting. But I think Philly will get it done. That's pick number three. Pick number four, speaking of pride, let's go to Minnesota. With the Tennessee Titans, a minus two and a half against the Minnesota Vikings. Tennessee up to two and two beat Jacksonville. Tennessee, look at their first two weeks, beat Denver at the gun and beat Jacksonville at the gun. So Tennessee's living right, right now, and they are two and oh. You expect Tennessee to be good the whole season. They had a tremendous run last year. They have a good, solid team. And then you got Minnesota. 0-2, lost to Indianapolis 28-11. Minnesota was leading this game 3-0 in the second quarter and then got outscored and demolished 28-0 basically the rest of the way. Minnesota did score a meaningless last-second touchdown. They got ambushed by the Colts. The Colts beat them up. What kind of performance was this by the Vikings. This was a Colt team that allowed Minshew and the Jaguars to complete 19 of 20 passes last week. And then you got Cousins. Did you see his stats? Hold on. Brace yourself if you haven't seen them. Cousins. 11 for 26, 113 yards, and three interceptions. Let me say it again. 11 for 26, 113 yards, and three interceptions against a Colt team that got carved up by Jacksonville the week before. Wow. As I've said, Cousins and Zimmer won't get you to the Super Bowl. And I know they had a decent year last year, beat the Saints in the first round, lost to the Niners in the second round. The Vikings have had good teams. Cousins is not a great quarterback. I've said it since day one. He's not a great quarterback. He's not going to win you a Super Bowl. And the Cousins-Zimmer combination is not happening. Again, the Vikings, like the Lions and the Jets and whoever else I'm going to mention, probably best you go 0-16, get Lawrence, get rid of Cousins, and start over. 
Minnesota's already two games behind Green Bay, already two games behind Chicago in the tough NFC. What are they really going to accomplish this year? Even if they get a little better here, this, they're not getting to the Super Bowl. No way. No way. Defense has been bad. Quarterback's been bad. I told you losing Diggs was going to be a big loss. They miss him. He's really good on Buffalo. It's just not happening for Minnesota. Minnesota has had some good teams. Unlike the Jets and the Lions, who are just bad, Minnesota's had some good teams. But I don't think Cousins can get you there. That performance last week is as bad as you could possibly play. 11 for 26, 113 yards, and three interceptions in this day and age in the NFL? Wow. And another thing I wanted to mention. The Colts are winning 28-3 with not much time left. Cook, the running back for Minnesota, scores a short touchdown to make it at the time 28-9. I think they'd add the two-point conversion. The final score was 28-11. Instead of Cook just handing the ball to the ref, what does he do? He does the bunny hop into the corner of the end zone looking for a camera. Are you kidding me, Cook? You look like an imbecile. Again, it's all about me, 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 me. Let me get on ESPN's top 10 celebrations. Let me get on Instagram. Let me get on Twitter. Let me get on Facebook. Let me get on TikTok. Let me get on Snapchat. Me, me, me. Who cares that my team has been blown out? Who cares that we're going to be 0-2? Who cares that I had about 60 yards rushing for the game? I scored a one-yard touchdown run. I'm going to get mine. I'm going to bunny hop to the corner of the end zone looking for a camera. You imbecile. If I was the Vikings, I would have fined his ass right on the spot. Send a message. Find his ass. It sends a terrible message to your team. Down 28 to 9 with basically no time left. And you're doing a bunny hop? You look like a rabbit running to the corner of the end zone looking for a camera? Are you kidding me? What's going through your mind, Cook? And it's all over the league. It's not just him. I saw J.J. Watt do it. Everyone loves J.J. Watt. Seems like a good dude, fabulous player. They were getting bombed by Baltimore. J.J. Watt makes a, a tackle in the backfield. His team's down by like 17 points. What does he do? Comes running up to the camera. Does one of these. That, that's popular in the NFL. Let's do one of these. What? You look ridiculous. Your team's down 17 points and you're giving me one of these. Get real. It's all over the league. It's got to stop. I've been saying this for years. You know, my team's down 42-7, to 7, but I scored with 30 seconds left, so now I'm going to do a dance. Yeah, let's go. Look at me, ESPN. Get me on those highlights. Yeah, let's go. Woo! Yeah. Bunny hop. Little bunny hop. It's all over the league. Find these guys. Send a message. Cook bunny hopping at 28-9 to 9 with a minute to go in the game? I would find his ass. And it's all over the league. It's not just him. It's not just what. And I'm not saying these are bad guys. A lot of these guys are good dudes. But it's all over the league now. It's like a plague. Everyone's doing it. Down 40 due to 7. I'm just going to score and I'm going to get mine now. Yeah, look at me. Look at me. Come on. Yeah. Bunny hop. Little bunny hop has to stop. It's about the team, not yourself. Me, 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 me. Deplorable. Minnesota should find them. Find them. Send a message. They just let it go on. It's embarrassing. As far as this game, Tennessee minus two and a half in Minnesota, like Philly, Minnesota has to show some pride here. It's now or never. It's getting late early for the Vikings, for Cousins, and for Zimmer. 
I move the line to eight and a half and take the Vikings one more time. One last time. Where are you, Minnesota? Tennessee has played two very close games. They like to ground and pound. They're in a lot of close games. Minnesota, at home, at least hang around. You're getting eight and a half with my teaser, at home. One last time, Vikings, this is about pride. You cannot go to 0-3, like Philly. Cannot do it. Even more so than Philly, because Minnesota's division's a lot tougher. Minnesota has to respond if they're going to have any type of season this year. So I'll take Minnesota plus eight and a half. Pride, 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 pride. Show some, Minnesota. And Cook, if you score a touchdown in overtime and win the game, then you can do your little bunny hop for me. Until then, knock it off. That's pick number four. Pick number five. Let's go to the dog pound in Cleveland with the Cleveland Browns a minus seven against the Washington Football Club. Washington one and one, lost to Arizona, no surprise there. We're still trying to figure out how good or bad Washington is. You really don't know. Still waiting on that young quarterback. How's he going to progress? Cleveland there one and one, beat Cincinnati. Mayfield looked good. The offense looked good. Defense didn't look all that great, but it was Thursday night football, so who knows? When I looked at this spread, Cleveland 7 over Washington, the first thing I said was, does Cleveland really deserve to be 7-point favorite over anybody? I mean, this is a game I'd probably throw out, but if I had to pick the game, I'd move it to 13 and take Washington. This game could be ugly, it could be sloppy, it could be messy. Two teams that aren't all that great, battling it out. I have to think it's close. I am not ready to start saying the Browns are going to be blowing teams out. Even last week, they only beat the Bengals by five. And that was a short week in their own building, and that was the Bengals with a rookie quarterback. So I'm not ready to start saying the Browns are going to lay it on teams. And if they do, I'll give them credit. First, first thing I thought of when I looked at this game, move it to 13, take Washington, if you had to play it. To me, it's a throwout. It, the teams are too messy. But that's how I play it. That's pick number five. Pick number six, let's go to the Steel City in Pittsburgh. With the Pittsburgh Steelers, a minus five against the Houston Texans. Pittsburgh 2-0 and beat Denver. Hung on and beat Denver. Pittsburgh had a big lead in this game. They knock Locke out of the game. And then the backup Driscoll for Denver comes in and he starts lighting up Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh had to survive Denver being down at the Steel at 10 late in the game, fourth and two. Steelers got a sack, ended up salting the game away. Steelers hung on. And when Driscoll came in the game, he called them up. I was surprised about that. Texans 0-2, lost to Baltimore. How about the Texans' schedule? I mentioned this last week. At Kansas City, home for Baltimore, at Pittsburgh. <laughs> Thanks, NFL. Wow, I mean, you talk about a schedule. At Kansas City, home for Baltimore, at Pittsburgh. Wow. And it always seems like the Texans are 0-2, by the way. And then they always seem to sneak into the playoffs. Not sure about the Texans coach either. He's shaky to me. And why did they get rid of Hopkins? Oof. Pittsburgh at home, minus 5 against the Texans. I'm going to move the line to 11 and take the Texans. I think they're going to be desperate. I think this is going to be high scoring. The Steelers gave up a lot of points to Driscoll in the backup quarterback. i got to think... Watson's going to be able to move the ball and get some points on the board. Not saying the Texans are going to win outright, but I think it's going to be high scoring. I think it's going to be a shootout. I think it's going to be close. I'll take the Texans with 11 because I think they're the more desperate team right now. I think they're going to be really desperate. You're 0 and 2. You know, 1 and 2 and 0 and 3 is a big difference. So you're going to have a lot of desperation here for the Texans. And I think it'll be high scoring. I think it'll be a shootout. I think it could come down right to the end. That's pick number six. Pick number seven, let's go out to Los Angeles with the L.A. Chargers on minus six against the Carolina Panthers. Panthers 0-2, lost to Tampa. Now they lose McCaffrey for a few weeks. Going to be a long year for Carolina. And again, and I'm, and I'm saying this a lot, like Detroit and like the Jets and like maybe Minnesota and whoever else, Carolina would do their fans a service if they went 0-16 and got Lawrence and started over. Bridgewater does some good things, 
but I don't know if he's going to be your Super Bowl quarterback and lead you into the future. You're probably better off going 0-16, getting Trevor Lawrence and starting over, just like you started over when you drafted Cam Newton. That would be the way to go for Carolina. And I'm not saying you purposely lose games. But if, if you go 0-16, I don't think the Carolina pa uh, Panther fans would be all that upset because they're not going anywhere this year. So if you're going to be bad and you're not going anywhere, you might as well be real bad. Chargers 1-1 one one, lost to Kansas City in a heartbreaker. The Chargers carried so much of this play. I really thought they were going to pull this game out at one point. Heartbreaking loss to the Chiefs. Heartbreaking. Remember, Taylor gets hurt in the pregame. So they go with the rookie Herbert. He plays well. He plays really well. Did have the one bad interception. He could have ran for a first down, got greedy, threw it back over the middle. It was picked off. Other than that, he looked really good. He looked the part. He looks like he could be a big-time player. Now, I know the coach said if Taylor's healthy, he'll play. We don't know if he's going to be healthy this week. To me, I would seriously consider going with uh, Herbert right now. He looked good. The Chargers look inspired. They looked inspired with him on the field. The Chargers came out. They were hard-hitting. They were hungry. They looked good for a lot of this game. But that's why the Chiefs are the Super Bowl champs. They pulled out a game that they didn't play well in. But I was impressed with the young Herbert. I would go with him right now. Because we know you're not going to... Taylor, you know what he is. He's a stopgap guy. He, you know, he's just holding down the fort until Herbert's ready. Herbert right, might be ready right now. He played that well. Now, I know it's a big difference, you know, a week to think about a game than being thrown into the game when you're not expecting to play. Sometimes being thrown into the game works to your advantage. You don't think that much. You just go out there and play. There's an old saying in sports. If you think, you stink. And maybe the young Herbert didn't have time to even think, and he was out there and he was just playing. Now, he's, if he plays this week, he's got a full week to think about it. Sometimes that works against you, but he showed me a lot. The Chargers were smart drafting him and getting Phillip Rivers out. That's what I've been talking about with some of these teams. Like the Lions with Stafford. Move in a different direction. The Chargers have done that. They have a new stadium. Young quarterback, the future looks bright, and they have talent. And they carried a lot of this game against the Chiefs. Heartbreaking loss for them. As far as this game, I'm going to move the line to pick them in a two-team teaser and take the Chargers. They're coming off the tough loss. I think they're going to respond here no matter who's at quarterback. Carolina doesn't have McCaffrey. I don't think Carolina's good enough to go into Los Angeles and win. I think the Chargers are better. They have more talent. So I like the Chargers here. That is pick number seven. Pick number eight, let's go up to Seattle. With the Seattle Seahawks on minus four and a half against the Dallas Cowboys. Seattle 2-0. Hung on and beat New England. Make the big play at the goal line at the end. Seattle took a lot of injuries in this game, especially to the defense. Linebacker, secondary. A lot of guys out on defense for Seattle. Now, you know Carroll's good. He's another guy that plugs in people, seems to find people. They took a lot of injuries in this game. They need to got the Dallas Cowboys, who had the comeback for the ages. They're up to 1-1, one and one, beat Atlanta in an improbable fashion. I mean, Dallas, great comeback and a, just a pitiful performance by Atlanta, letting that game slip away. Nice job by Dallas not giving up on the game. Nice job by them. And I challenged the Cowboys last week. I said, put up or shut up. And for a lot of this game, they looked lost. McCarthy looked lost with his fake punts. You know, going for two, uh, you know, too early in the game. Dallas being carved up on defense. But they responded. Prescott was throwing the ball all over the place. Great comeback win for Dallas. I'm not saying they're not a team without flaws, but that was a great comeback. And an equally awful, you know, collapse by the Falcons again. You believe in Uncle Mo? Momentum? I do in sports. Once things start to go a certain way... They kind of go that way. If Dallas is ever going to capitalize on, on some positive momentum, it's going to be here. Seattle's got a lot of injuries to the secondary. Dallas can score. The line's 4.5. I'm going to move it to 10.5 and, and take Dallas. I think this game is a shootout. I think this is a 38-35 game, somebody. Both teams are going to move the ball. Both teams are going to score. This is a wild game. This is going to be a fun game to watch. Could go either way. 
I mean, it should be a shootout. But I'm going to take Dallas with the 10 and a half. That's a lot of points. Seattle's beat up on defense. Dallas, Uncle Mo is on their side. If they're ever going to capitalize on some momentum and get uh, some wins strung together, it could start here. Tough order. Tough order to, to go into Seattle and win at any time. But this game should be a shootout. Like I said, 38-35. Look for the over in this game. But I got to like Dallas with 10 and a half and a two-team teaser. Have to like them with that, that amount of points. So I'll take Dallas there with the 10 and a half and a two-team teaser. That's pick number eight. Oh, by the way, how about them Cowboys? Pick number nine. Let's go down to New Orleans. The Big Easy. Mardi Gras. Fat Tuesday. With the New Orleans Saints. Who that? Or at home, minus four. One more. Who that? New Orleans Saints minus four at home against the Green Bay Packers in what should be a fabulous football game. Saints one and one. Lost to the Raiders on Monday Night Football. Of course, their big receiver is hurt. We'll see about him this week. Green Bay two and zero. Oh. Laid it on Detroit. How about Green Bay's offense the first two weeks? They're on fire. Woo! What have they scored? Like 80-something points in the first two weeks? They are on fire. This is the Sunday night football game, by the way. This is another terrific matchup. This is a great game. Rodgers looks on fire right now. And by the way, the Green Bay Packers, as I mentioned last week, the most teams, uh, the most uh, championships, I should say, in the history of football. 13, I believe they have. Championships and Super Bowls combined. So they're the franchise with the most championships. Don't forget it. And I'm not a Packer fan. I'm just pointing that out. It's not just about the Super Bowl era. There was a whole era before that. And the Packers dominated a lot of it. As far as this game, i got to move the line to 10 and take Green Bay. Have to do it. Green Bay has looked really good the first two weeks, especially on offense. Saints got carved up by the Raiders, and they don't have their best receiver. I, I don't think he's going to play. I know it's in the Superdome, but there's no fans. That's a big advantage for Green Bay now. I think this game's got to be close. Field goal game either way. And I could see Green Bay winning this game outright, to be honest with you. So I have to like Green Bay with 10, you know, in a two-team teaser. That's the Sunday Night Football game, and that's pick number nine. Who that? Pick number 10. Let's go to the Meadowlands in New Jersey. Not too far from here. With the San Francisco 49ers on minus four against the New York football Giants. Giants 0-2, lost to Chicago, lost Barkley for the year. Tore his knee. That was the theme around the league this week, by the way. There are so many guys out. I mean, every team took an injury. The Giants never can see, uh, seem to have a full complement on offense. We'll see about the young quarterback, Jones. The Giants don't have a lot to work with, and they're another team. I mentioned the Jets. Say the Giants go 0-16 this year, and you have Trevor Lawrence sitting there with the number one pick. Do you take him, or have you seen enough of Jones to make you think he's the quarterback of the future? As of right now, I, I don't know. I would be tempted to take Lawrence as of right now. Now, we got a long season to go here, and it's hard to evaluate Jones, especially now that Barkley is out. That's interesting. That's going to be interesting for a lot of these teams if they have the worst record, these teams that picked quarterbacks recently, like the Jets and the Giants and whoever else. Going to be interesting if they get that number one pick. Going to be a long year for the Giants, though. They just don't have a lot of talent. They did show a little moxie climbing back into that game against Chicago. Actually had a chance to win it at the end, fell short. So they did show something there. They just don't have enough. They're not going to win many games. Then you got the Niners. They are 2-0. Bomb the Jets. The Niners had all sorts of injuries. Garoppolo, questionable this week. They lose Bosa. They lose all sorts of guys all over the field. Didn't matter against the Jets, and I don't think it's going to matter against the Giants. By the way, another thing. San Francisco is staying on the East Coast this week. Played the Jets. Decided to stay here, not go back to San Francisco, stay here, and now play the Giants. Interesting, teams have a different philosophy with that. Some teams like to stay all week, 
like the Niners are doing, and some teams like the Rams, who are on the East Coast the last two weeks, they're flying back and forth. Me, personally, if it was me, I'd get out of the city and go back home. You know, these private charters, you can get back home, even if it's across the country, pretty fast. You don't want to hang around a city all week. Now, I don't think it's going to matter too much, even though the Niners have a lot of injuries, because the Giants, let's be honest, they stink. They're not that good. Barkley's out. The Niners, even with a depleted roster being here on the East Coast all week, I think the Niners have a lot to manhandle, you know, enough to manhandle the Giants, like they manhandled the Jets. They manhandle the Jets, they should manhandle the Giants. They just should. So I would go Niners money line here. I would love if Garoppolo played, he might, but I still think no matter what, the Niners are going to find a way to win this game. So I would take Niners money line here. I just don't believe in the Giants at all. I don't. So that's pick number 10. Pick number 11. Let's go to the Mile High City in Denver with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers a minus six against the Denver Broncos. Denver 0-2, lost to Pittsburgh. Locke goes out. He'll be out a while. Driscoll looked good. He looked good. Now, we'll see if he can do it back-to-back -back weeks, but he looked good against Pittsburgh. Tampa Bay 1-1 one one beat Carolina. I'm still looking for uh, Tampa Bay to be a little better. I mean, maybe expectations are too high. They got off to a huge lead against Carolina, then kind of went to sleep. Carolina actually got back in the game until Fournette made that big run at the end. Looking for Tampa to be a little better. I'm looking for Brady to be a little better. Now, Brady doesn't usually play in Denver. Denver's got all kinds of injuries, too. The quarterback, Von Miller. I know Driscoll played well, but i got to see that he can do it two weeks in a row. So i got to move this line to pick him and take Tampa Bay. I think Tampa Bay's got just too much talent right now for Denver. Denver's hung in the first two games but lost. I think Tampa Bay will find a way to win this game. I think they will find a way to win. I think they got too much talent. And i got to see if Driscoll can do this two weeks in a row. So I go pick them, Tampa Bay, in a two-team teaser. That's pick number 11. Pick number 12. This is the Thursday night game. Let's go to Jacksonville. With the Jacksonville Jaguars, they're at home, minus three against the Miami Dolphins. Dolphins 0-2, lost to the Bills. They were in that game, though, Miami. Fell behind early, but they were in that game. A break here or there, Dolphins could have pulled that game out. They were in that game, played a lot better the Dolphins last week than they did week one. Jacksonville 1-1, one one. they've been in both games. Won their first game and lost a heartbreaker to Tennessee. Minshew has some moxie. He does some things. I know he had a couple of picks, including the one at the end that sealed the deal. But he led him back multiple times in this game. And Jacksonville, a lot of their rookies are playing well. Everyone thought Jacksonville was going to be the worst team in the league this year. It doesn't look that way. They've shown life. Unlike some teams like the New York Football Jets. Now, I don't like betting Thursday Night Football. To me, this would be a throwout. And by the way, how about the Thursday Night Football schedule? Cleveland, Cincinnati last week, and now Jacksonville, Miami? Ugh. And Jacksonville's one of the few teams that's letting fans in. There are a few more teams than I thought letting fans in the building. Like I mentioned, Jacksonville, Miami, Kansas City, Dallas let some fans in the building in. A few others are letting a sprinkling in, like even the Browns last week. You had a little dusting of fans. So Jacksonville will have some fans there. Listen, I don't bet Thursday Night Football, but I will move the line to nine and take Miami. I, I mean, really, how do you pick this game? Move it to nine and take Miami if you have to. I think it's a field goal game either way. You don't know what you're getting on Thursday Night Football. I really don't know what I'm getting here. So I will take Miami plus nine if you have to play it, if I have to make a pick. But I don't bet Thursday Night Football. To me, this would be a throwout. That's pick number 12. Pick number 13. This is the Monday Night Football game. What a matchup this is. This is a potential one seed type of game with the Baltimore Ravens at home. Minus three against the Kansas City Chiefs. Chiefs 2-0 beat the L.A. Chargers. I'll tell you, the Chiefs showed their Super Bowl medal in this game because they were outplayed for a lot of this game. The Chargers beat them up for a lot of this game. The Chiefs had a lot of penalties in this game, a lot of mistakes in this game. But that's why the Chiefs won the Super Bowl. And that's why Reed is such a good coach and Spagnuolo is such a good defensive coordinator. They found a way to get it done even though they didn't play well. They didn't play well. They made a lot of mistakes. And how about the kicker for the Chiefs? Hits two 58-yard field goals. How about the end? He hits a 53-yarder, 
but then there was a penalty. So then he's got to try a 58 yarder, but then, you know, the Chargers called timeouts. So he's got to try another 58 yarder, makes them all. And looked good doing it. What a kicker he is. Clutch, clutch, clutch. Oh, yeah, clutch. Woo! You like to see that from your kicker. Eh, 53, I made it. 58, I made it. I'll make 58 again. No problem. Chiefs win. Solid kicker. Ice in his veins. Ice water. The ice man. Woo! So the Chiefs are 2 0. Then you got the Ravens. They're 2 0. Beat up on the Texans. Listen, normally the safe play here would be move it to 9, take the Chiefs in a two team te teaser. And that may be the way you want to go. I think Kansas City's due for a loss. Baltimore is at home. The Chiefs got beat up last week. They even took some injuries. We'll see who gets on the field for them. Receiver left. Took a lot of injuries. They got beat up. The Chargers really laid it on them last week. Like, physically. Now you got to play the Ravens. After a physical game with the Chargers, now you got to play the Ravens. Who want this game in the worst way. Because you know they're upset. They fizzled out for the last two years in the playoffs. They want home field. They got you here on Monday Night Football at home. I think the Chiefs are due for a loss, and that's not an insult to the Chiefs. You can't win every game. They've won how many games in a row now? 11 going back to last year and the playoffs and the Super Bowl. You can't win every game. The Chiefs are due for a loss. I like Baltimore here to win this game outright. I like Baltimore in the money line. And like I said, the safe way would be moving it to nine in a two-team teaser and taking the Chiefs. I think Baltimore's going to win. I think the Chiefs are due for a loss. They got physically beat up by the Chargers last week. They may have some injuries, and I think they're due. And big, bad Baltimore is waiting for them. The wolf is at the door, Kansas City. And this is not an insult to the Chiefs. You can't win every game. They're due for a loss. Could have easily lost last week. I think Baltimore gets them this week. Baltimore, money line, Monday Night Football, must-watch game. Ravens get it done. That's pick number 13. Pick number 14, let's go up to Buffalo. The Buffalo Bills are minus three against the L.A. Rams. Bills 2-0 beat Miami. I think the Bills are going to be a very good team this year. I think they are going to be a playoff team this year. May be able to overtake New England. I like Diggs on Buffalo. Gives them another weapon. Buffalo young quarterback looks good. I like the direction Buffalo is going. And the Rams, let's give them some credit. They're up to 2-0. Beat Dallas week one, go on the road and handle Philadelphia. Their offense looks good. Rams had a very disappointing year last year after getting to the Super Bowl two years ago. They look good. That division is real good. Real good. You could have four solid teams. The Seahawks, the Cardinals, the Niners, and the Rams all could be good. And you have an extra team making the playoffs this year. A lot of those teams in that division could make it. So nice job by the Rams. I'm going to move the line and take the Rams. They've shown me enough the first two weeks that they can at least hang in the game. I think that it's going to be a close game. Like I said, the Rams did fly back from Philadelphia. They'll make the trip across country again. That's the way they're doing it. Niners chose to stay. I personally would fly home. Get out of the city. Get out. You don't want to stick. Or you just get out of there. Get out. Come back. You can get on these, you know, private charters, be home in a few hours. Spend the whole week in your bed. Rather than stay in, you know, some complex or hotel or whatever the whole week. I think the Rams made the right call there. I'm going to move the line and take the Rams. I think this is a fun game. I think this is a really good game. you got some good games this week. Buffalo, L.A., good game. Baltimore, Kansas City is a good game. Uh, what else do we got cooking here? We got... Um, Seattle, Dallas is a good game. New Orleans, Green Bay is a good game. I think Pittsburgh, Houston is going to be a good game. You have some good games this week. So I go Rams plus nine, two team teaser. That's pick number 14. Pick number 15. Let's go down to Hot Atlanta where things are icy cold. Where the Atlanta Falcons had another meltdown. The Atlanta Falcons minus three and a half against the Chicago Bears. The Bears are 2 0. Oh. Come back and beat Detroit. Two weeks ago, hang on and beat the Giants this week. The Bears are a funny team. They are You just don't know what you're going to get from them, but they are 2-0. Trubisky's an up-and-down guy. They are 2-0. Give them credit for that. And then you got the Falcons. 
0-2 and completely melted down to Dallas. Their defense is atrocious. I mean, there's no other way to say it. They've given up like 80 points in two weeks. And I told you this at the beginning of the season. The Falcons will score, but get outscored most of, the, most of their games. And sure enough, that happened. And what were they doing on that onside kick? And it was a good onside kick. Give the Dallas kicker credit. But the, Falcon, the ball's rolling, and the Falcons are all like looking at it, backing away. Go get the ball and jump on it. Don't let the ball play you. You go get it. They're all like, let me get out of the way. Somebody else take it. Go get the ball and dive on it, like Dallas did. My goodness, what a terrible collapse by the Falcons. You thought you saw a collapse in the Super Bowl. This was just another one. Oh, my goodness. And Quinn, what are you doing? You told me after the Falcons lost the Super Bowl years ago that your priority was defense? Really? You haven't drafted one decent player on defense yet. The only decent player you drafted in the, in the draft was the receiver. You got more offense, but you got less defense again. Falcons got good wideouts, so they got no defense. You can't win in this league giving up 80 points in two weeks. It's crazy. Awful loss by the Falcons. Just deplorable. This game is just a mess. How do you pick? The, to me, I would throw this game out. You can't figure either one of these teams. But if I had to play it, I'd move it to 9.5 and, and take Chicago. Just because everyone seems to score in Atlanta. And I don't trust them with any kind of lead. So as much as I don't like Chicago. And they, they're funny because they might not score. You know, they're, they're weird, the Bears. They score 17 against the Giants in one half. They don't, don't score the second half. So they're weird. The Falcons are bizarre. They haven't been the same team in years. So I would move the line up and take Chicago. If I had to play it, I would probably throw this game out. I don't like this. is an eerie game. This is eerie. I, I don't like this whole mix here. And I would normally look at the over, but again, Chicago, they sometimes don't score. And you would think they would be able to score against Atlanta. Maybe use that over and under in a teaser. Tease it down and then bet it over. To me, not one of my favorite plays of the week. But I would move it to 9.5 and, and take Chicago if you have to play it. I mean, just an awful, despicable loss by the Falcons. And please, dive on the onside kick. Oh boy, let me get away from it. Dive on the ball. Don't let the ball play you. But they collapsed long before that. They just let Dallas carve them up all over the field. You could actually see this coming before it actually happened. All right, that's pick number 15. Pick number 16, final pick. Let's go up to New England. With the New England Patriots, a minus 6.5 against the Las Vegas Raiders. The Raiders are 2-0. And like I told you, they were looking for a big win on Monday Night Football, and they got it. Who picked the Raiders? Who picked the Raiders? And Chucky and the Grim Reaper and Darth Vader. Raiders have looked good on offense the first two weeks. They've put up a boatload of points. Maybe they're starting to turn the corner. You're starting to believe in Carr. You're starting to believe in Gruden. Maybe this is the year. New stadium. They were all fired up on Monday night. Now they got to go on the road to New England. New England, 1-1, one one, lost a heartbreaker to Seattle. Newton gets stopped at the goal line. Did not like that call. Did not like that call. Newton was carving them up, passing the ball. Spread Seattle out. They got all sorts of injuries. Pass the ball there. Pass the ball. And when you spread them out, you have more chances to run if you can't find somebody. I would have never run a straight run there. Didn't like the call. Didn't like the call. Newton was carving up Seattle at the end. Spread them out. Throw the ball if you can't. You got lanes with everyone spread out to then run it. Didn't like the call. New England battled in that game, though. They came back from multiple deficits. They could have easily won this game. They fall short. They're one one This is another strange game. I'm going to move it to 12 and a half and take the Raiders for two reasons. And, and listen, it's a little tricky because the Raiders had, Raiders had that emotional win. Now they got a short week go on the road into New England. The Raiders showed me enough that they're going to be at least in this game and not going to be blown out. And if I get 12 and a half in a teaser, I like that. And I don't know if New England this year 
is capable of blowing out a lot of teams. Like, even in week one against Miami, they beat them by 10. And at one point, that was a three-point game in the fourth quarter. And New England had a lot of the better play in that game. I don't think New England's going to blow out a lot of teams. And I think the Raiders are going to be in a lot of their games. They can score the Raiders. You saw that last night. You saw that in week one. The Raiders can score. How much are they going to get on defense, though? But I think they're going to be in this game... I think they're going to ride that momentum into New England, at least keep this game competitive. I'm getting 12 and a half in a teaser. I think the Raiders are under that number. I'm not saying they can outright win, but I like the 12 and a half. I like the 12 and a half. Again, not one of my favorite plays of the week. Never like betting against New England off a loss. But the Raiders showed me enough that at least going to be in the game, not be blown out. So I'd go 12 and a half Las Vegas Raiders there. In another good game. That's another game. A lot of good games this weekend. Should be a fun weekend in the NFL. So there you go. You guys are all caught up. You guys are all set. Thanks again for all the support. Stay happy, healthy, and safe. Pick a lot of winners. Make a lot of money. Go slow. We're still trying to figure this out. And then maybe in October you start warming up. 28-8 and eight, though, the first two weeks for me. Can't complain about that. So again, guys, thanks for your support. Stay happy, healthy, and say pick a lot of winners. Make a lot of money. I'll talk to you next Tuesday. Enjoy the games. Take it.